Hello and welcome to this RTC Draft scripting video. Patch 3.2 brought some changes, which will make your life easier if you want to increment or decrement property values or check ranges for properties or global variables. In case you are new to scripting in RTC or want to brush up on how to access object properties, we recommend taking a look at the How to Access Object Properties with Scripting tutorial. The link can be found in the video description. Let's take a look at the 3.2 improvements in detail. We will start with incrementing or decrementing property values. Currently, adding to or subtracting from the current value of a property looks like this. To set the property morel.morel value from the object character Manfred, we have to first get the current property value and then add to that. Using the new methods increment prop to add or decrement prop to subtract shortens the entire expression and thanks to the method name it is also much clearer what we want to achieve here. The syntax is increment prop, the object in question, here character Manfred, the property we want to change in the format feature name dot property name, here morel dot morel value. And last but not least, the amount we want to increment the current value by, let's say 10. Depending on where the scripting expression is used, you can of course also combine it with the available identifier, speaker or self. For example, subtracting 5 from Manfred's current moral value in the output pin of this dialog fragment, where Manfred is the speaker, could be shortened to decrement prop speaker Moral dot moral value 5. Now we take a look at how checking for a range has been improved. In this example, we are at a reaction point in the flow. Depending on the strength value of the player character, a property in this case, the flow will automatically follow the valid branch. If the player has a strength below or equal to 3, we will follow the top branch here. With a strength above or equal to 8, the bottom branch. The middle branch of this reaction point gets selected if the value of the strength property lies between 4 and 7. As you can see, it has been possible to check for a range before patch 3.2, but it was a bit cumbersome to set up as the expression was on the longer side of things. We can now replace the existing expression here with the new method is prop in range. As in this example, we are looking for a template property of the player character. Here our syntax is the method name, is prop in range, then again the object in question, here player, the property we want to check against, in the format feature name dot property name, here skills dot strengths, and the lower and upper bounds for the range, which are inclusive. If the player strength lies between 4 and 7, the method returns true and the conversation will continue through this branch. If not, the method will return false and this branch will be invalid. The conversation will continue through one of the other branches depending if the player has a very high or very low strength. Again, we shorten the expression overall and thanks to the method name we immediately see what we are trying to achieve. If we want to check for a variable range, it works out even simpler. Let's say we have an integer variable called cards, representing a deck of playing cards. The player wants to take part in the local card game. They can only play if their deck of cards is somewhere between 40 and 60 cards. If they have fewer or more, the deck is not valid and they cannot play. We can use a condition node, as we only have one outgame branch for a true result and one if it's false. When checking for a variable range, we use is in range. The syntax looks like this. The method is in range. Variable set dot variable name here inventory dot cards. Then the range with lower and upper bound, both inclusive. So we enter 40 as the lower and 60 as the upper limit. That's it. If the value of the cards variable is inside this range, we continue the dialog flow through the true branch and the player will be able to play a magical game of cards. If the variable value is less than 40 or higher than 60, 
the flow will continue through the false branch and they will get told that their deck is not of legal specifications and that they have to take care of that before being allowed to play. You might know that RTC Draft lets you call custom methods, which then get processed within the game engine. You can combine them with both isInRange and isPropInRange. For example, with a custom method getTime to query the in-game time and a check for isInRange, you could check if a shop is currently open or closed or determine the range of answers an NPC might have. Of course, all new methods are supported by our importers for Unity and for Unreal. The old syntax for incrementing or decrementing values or checking for a range will continue to work. So you do not need to worry if you have used any of these expressions in your current or older projects. This will be all for this video. We hope these improvements will help to make your life easier when scripting an RTC draft. See you around.